Welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, we're really excited for you guys to be joining us today um, with our What's New in Share file. So all of this is to show you all the impactful new features that's available in Share file that's been rounded up in the last three months. Um, so my name is Stacy Schrader. I'm the lead product marketing manager here at Sharefile, and I'll be joined here today with my colleague Juan. Hi, Stacy. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm super excited to join you today. I am, uh, as I said, Juan Gonzalez, lead competitive intelligence manager uh, for Sharefile. This webinar will look a little bit different on how we typically do our how-to webinars. Um, so we're going to be highlighting some of the new big enhancements that we've made in the last three months and walking you through some of the problems they're solving and what value they can have for your organization. So it's a little bit less technical, but you'll still see a lot of the features in product. We just won't be jumping into the physical product today just because we have so many features to get through. Um, agenda, so we've been busy these last few months delivering lots of value inside of Sharefile to help you simplify your document workflows, to increase your efficiency on repetitive workflows, and improve data security to help you stay proactive on potential threats. So the product and technology organization has been extremely committed uh, to talking and getting feedback from all of you and many customers as we can, um, from brand new customers to the customers that joined us from the very beginnings nearly over 20 years ago, um, to ensure we're building and iterating on Sharefile, what you need to get your work done faster, easier, and more secure as well. And we'll jump into our content with first having some enhancements that we've made to projects. Um, if you're newer to Sharefile or haven't really tapped into projects yet, it's one of our newer features released in the past year that really consolidates work with staff and or your clients in one particular place. Um, so you're able to facilitate project management, enhance your document list collection, communicate with staff or your clients contextually in a singular place, and collect information with questionnaires and even more with data tables. So this is something that we've really heavily invested in um, to make sure that we are listening to how you're working with your document workflows and where you're having um, problems in those workflows with efficiency. Um, so these enhancements will help you streamline your projects to give you even more flexibility, automation, and granular control when you're working inside of those projects. Um, so we know when you're collaborating with staff and clients, everyone requires different permissions on visibility of documents or even tasks or even a file sometimes as well. Um, everyone will need the editability or maybe some people just need viewability of that file. Um, every single person inside of a project doesn't necessarily always have to have the same permissions. Um, so we see many people trying to build these manual workflows to ensure they're delivering the right access to everything and to everyone, which is obviously very time consuming and convoluted. Um, so to help improve this problem, we've built some custom permissions in projects now. This will help you quickly and seamlessly manage everything you need inside of a single container where work is happening. Um, so not only does this cut out the time consuming process you are managing with trying to figure out who gets that file, who gets to view that file, who gets to download that file, or who can upload a document, who can view that uploaded document, it offers way more simplicity and speed when getting work done on those internal staff projects or even your client services within a project as well. And in addition to those granular permissions, we also realized how much a client service or initial um, internal project can get slowed down when teams aren't delivering the needed documents to keep that service or that project moving. I think we've all been there when you're constantly poking a client or colleague to get you um, a certain file or a list of documents um, and then setting reminders maybe on your calendar as well to send them an email or a ping to get you to check in to see if they've delivered that document yet. Um, so to remove this pain point, we've added some automated reminders to our document request list um, inside of projects. So when you set a due date for a document request list item or the entire list, the client or the staff will receive automated email or in-product notifications about this item being due soon. Um, this update 
really takes all the time you used to spend on following up with more high value work and more time to be able to not have to remember to poke that person. And it's a gentle reminder for that staff member or that client to get those things delivered in time as well. And in addition to those reminders, we know that you all commonly work with one or more individuals, whether that's a client entity or it's a bunch of staff members and colleagues to get work done. So we've added the ability to assign individual document request list items to a specific user. So everyone is aware of what is needed from them and when, making sure that you're getting those documents back faster and speeding up your service or your project internally. So here you can see what these granular permissions and projects look like. A key call out here that I wanted to note um, that you can control literally every portion of a project, giving access, visibility, editability, download capabilities that you need to give to a person that's in that project that's a colleague or a staff member or a client entity as well. So if it's a client coming in to uh, work on that project with you or that service, you're able to control exactly what they can and can't see and what they can do with the assets that are inside of that project, which is really helpful when you're not managing that outside of it. Um, for item level assignment of specific requested documents, you can easily select one or more from your document request list and assign to one or more users. So maybe you have a certain file that you know that Sally needs to upload, but they're not very clear that Sally needs to actually get that uploaded since everyone's on that list. Um, you can granularly assign each item within that document collection list to a specific person to help increase that visibility and transparency with that list. Um, I think the call out here with automated reminders is that clients or staff can customize what type of reminders they want, whether that be that email reminder or that in product or both. Um, and they are also sent reminders to the document request list that are assigned due dates. So you have the ability to assign a due date to an entire list or the ability to um, assign a certain item within that list for a specific due date. So if you need a document in that list sooner than you do the others, you have that ability to granularly assign and they'll be reminded that way on those due dates. And with those due dates, You'll have um, 10 days before, five days before, one day before, and overdue for daily for 30 days. So they're constantly getting reminded and you're not having to do that poking process that you would normally have to do, whether that's through email or follow up via text as well. All right, we're gonna move on to data tables with Juan. Thank you, Stacey. And I'm seeing a lot of questions coming. Um, guys, please keep asking those. Remember the right spot for asking those questions is the Q&A. So you'll see in the bottom of the screen, a little thing that says Q&A, you need to click there and then post your question, okay? So please keep keep those coming. We like to make this really interactive. So um, Stacy started sharing some improvements, enhancements to our project's functionality. What we're going to see now in the next few slides are some improvements as well that you can find within data tape, within our projects. I'm going to discuss data tables now. Data tables is um, something, it's a new feature we have added into our projects that will help you to organize your data, to provide centralized visibility, and actually to make you and your team more productive uh, when interacting and using client data. So let's move to the next slide and let's get um, into more details about this. Data, data tables um, are here to solve one unique need, right? I mean, you, and your um, your um, employees are currently using um, data from your customers, and you're getting that data from several tools, right? I mean, we know everyone nowadays use uh, really a multiple amount of software and tools, and you get client data in all of those um, um, softwares, right? So sometimes it, it is really hard to make sure that um, you get the right access in the right moment, and everyone actually have the right access when they need it. So with data tables, um, Sherfield can now help you not only to 
um, facilitate the access to that data uh, to improve client interaction and servicing, but also um, data tables in projects can help you to uh, be an alternative efficiency um, to um, data organization tools um, to actually manage your, your task, your time, add notes. So what actually data tables does, right? I mean, data tables allows you to streamline the access to client data right? They can also offer a unified and centralized platforms that will improve your internal visibility and organization. Um, a few benefits that we think that you will be really happy with is that actually you will be able now to consolidate client and project data uh, to make your um, decision-making process faster, but also to improve your productivity. Everything from your clients can be consolidated in this new data table view. These data tables, you can customize those and create those, right? So you will be able to add every information that you have from third-party tools, but also from information which is already living in Sharefile and add it to data tables. We will see how we're doing that uh, in the next few slides. But also, this will help you to streamline your workflows, save time, and what I think is most important is reduce errors, which are very natural when you use so many tools just to work with the same client. Moving on to the next slide, um, this is a view, guys, that uh, I think you should consider for um, how you will be able to interact with this. Once again, this is within projects. Within projects, you will be able to create pretty simple um, um, uh, a data table. As you see, you will just need um, to go and click on the plus uh, field. You will be able to create a blank tab, which is a new data table or you will be able to use a template, right? A previous data table you have created uh, for other projects and you can also add it here. So through this view, you will be able actually to um, consolidate um, all the client data that you need and will be able also as well to share this information with everyone that in access, right? I mean, Stacy mentioned a few minutes ago about how important it is to provide the right access to the right people when you're interacting with clients and internally. This is also helping you uh, to provide a similar kind of function, right? I mean provide that everyone that needs access to the client data at the right moment when they are servicing and interacting, the client can see everything in a consolidated place and way. Moving on to the next slide, I wanna show you pretty briefly how you can actually customize this data, right? Um, when you click on that plus um, field, you will be able to customize the data table name. You will be able to customize the view of how that data table will look like. Right now, uh, the default view uh, will able to um, be provided as a table view, but very soon you will also be able to add a Kanban view, a list view, and a calendar view, right? So once again, um, we want you to be able to add more relevancy and transparency to how um, we are doing things in Sharefile. And I think that this new addition of data tables within projects will help you not only to have a consolidated and unified view of everything that is going on with your clients, but also to be and provide that in a contextual way, right? I mean, provide data internally for your um, team members to actually deliver and, and, and enhance the, the client uh, interaction. Um, talking about client interaction, let's move to the next slide. Um, we know that constantly we need to gather data from our clients. It doesn't matter in what industry you are, you need that data from your customers, right? And we know that that process of uh, gathering that data or collecting that information is not easy, right? And you're all the time doing all the same um, um, tasks, right? So we wanna help you to streamline actually how you collect that information, but also ensure that you do that in a consistent way and you reduce the errors when you're adding that information. So let's, let's take a look at our information request. What are the problems that information requests are here to answer? Um, we know that some of you are still using email, right, to collect that uh, confidential data. Um, some, sometimes you're uh, also using unsecured links, right, um, from other tools that you can have in part of your uh, tech stack. But also, we provide sometimes our customers um, the access to some portals which are not easy to use. So we use all these separate tools and software to gather information, and we are not sure if those are easy to use or even if they are secure to use. With information request, um, Sherefal is here to help you to centralize that information collection, like for example, during client onboarding with digital intake forms, which are able to be started from um, projects and are pretty easy to use. So what are uh, information requests? Information requests actually allows you to collect this data from within projects 
and doing that from a secure way and also digitally. Some of the benefits that I think you need to consider when thinking about how this will impact your business is you will be able to have total flexibility in terms of how you personalize this a questionnaire to fit your needs and your company policies. Once you templatize this, you will be able actually to save a lot of time when you collect information, but also you will be able to provide an, an, an um, smoother onboarding experience, right? Because you will be able to have all this from one single place. And again, you will be able to have that centralized view so you can actually um, work better and provide a, a, an easier experience to your customers. But also you will be providing um, this experience of templatized and, and centralized access to your own employees. So let's look at how it works, right? Um, so as I said, Again, you can use um, previous information request templates or you can create one of your own. If you want to create one, it's super simple. You will be on projects, right? You will click on information request. Then you will click on create information request. You will be able to add the name, the description, and a due date for that information request. And then voila, right? This is what you will see when you all after you're doing all that. You will be able to customize that information request to fit your needs. Take a look at this slide. On the left side, you will see all the fields, right? I mean, you can uh, add a short or long um, or, or long um, questions. You will be able to add numbers, check boxes, uh, dates, uh, even a display text. So you can actually ask for, for, for information where you can uh, provide some space for that. And once you click the type of field that you want to use, you will, see, you will see on your own screen what happens on, on the right side of the screen, right? You can customize each of the field properties. So, and, and then you will do this by each of the, the fields that you want to add. And then one, once you click and when you select, um, how the final information request form you will it will look like, you will just click save, right? And once you click save, you will be able to allocate and, and assign that information request to some of your existing users or new users, perhaps, right? And if you go to the next slide, we can see what happens after. So as I said before, you create your very own new information request or you use ones that you have been uh, created before, uh, and, and was available to you through a template. Uh, you assign a user that wants that you want that user to sign, uh, I'm sorry, to, to look at the information request and fill in, and then you need to track that, right? You wanna see, um, as Stacy put it pretty bluntly at the very beginning, you don't wanna be, uh, I mean, doing all the follow-ups uh, and, and you, want, you just wanna be notified when that actually is being completed. So if you can see the screen and I hope it's not too small, you will see the status of the information request if it was completed or not. Once that is completed, you will be able to click on the request and, and see um, the information um, from the people. You can see the, that on the response details um, image that is on the screen right now, and you can see actually what they answer to. And you will also be able to see who has been assigned this to, right? You see those little bubbles with J, um, JG? Those are the names, I mean, first and last name of the people you have assigned. So actually, from this unique view, you will be able not only to see what's going on with your uh, information request, but also you will be able to store and view all that data in a central place that will allow you, again, to be more productive, but also to be more organized internally and improve your workflows. Let's move forward and discuss another uh, enhancement to project and templates, right? I, I've been using the word templates a few times already because we realize, guys, that you need to save time, right? You do a lot of things a lot of times, many times with many customers. So if we can provide the ability for you to save some time just by saving um, some information requests, some projects, or whatever it is that you're doing, we will be helping you to save some money, right? But also some time. So what is that that we're going to discuss right now? It's only templates for projects, right? Um, because again, there are many ways you can save um, time with templates. Stacey is going to discuss in the next few slides, document templates. Um, but I'm going to discuss here uh, the, the project templates actually, right? When you look at project templates, there are a few things that, that I think you need to consider. First of all, um, what is the problem that is solving, right? You spend, as I said, a lot of time creating projects from scratch and imputing the same information all the time. You sometimes will find out that there is no an organized way that is being used across your own organization to save time around this. So what is our solution? Project templates in Sharefile, where you can create projects with pre-filled information in only a few clicks. 
What it does basically is share file project templates will allow you to create new templates with pre-configured task, document request, information requests, and tables. And this can be done pretty quickly, right? So what are the benefits that you need to consider for this new feature? Save time and effort. A standardized template that will be able to help you deliver a consistent and professional process and enhance your client experience. Let, let's take a look at how this will look like. And again, when I say um, templates, similarly to what we saw before with information requests, this is very simple, right? I mean, you can create a project. When you go to projects and you would create one, you will be able to use a blank template, I'm sorry, a blank one or a template. When you choose to create a new project from a template, you will have two options. Um, you will be able to use our own catalog, as you can see here on the slide, right? Where uh, we have been building a lot of very industry specific um, templates for you to use, but you will also be able to create your own and save it, right? So when you click on, on when you're within projects and you create uh, that, you will then be redirected to your own templates library. And from there, you can select our own very templates, the ones that have been shared with you or the ones you saved, right? So again, three options for you when you're creating an, a, a new project start a new one or use a template. And when you're um, using a template, you can use, you can browse your catalog. I mean, the share file ones that, that we provided, other ones that have been shared with you from your co-members or the ones that you have saved, okay? Um, so let's move to the next one. Um, I think that that is uh, very interesting. What I'm, I'm seeing, what, what we're showing here is the fact that how you can save the templates, right? And how you can customize the project and save those for your future use. In this case, it's very simple. I mean, take a look at, this, uh, at the slide here, right? Um, you're working on, on a template and you find it that you customize it to the ability to meet your needs and, and how you want, you like, for example, to onboard new clients. And then you will just go to the, uh, the three little dots there and save as template. And then you can add a name and a very specific name and, and the description. And something very, very important, no data that it's including within that project will be saved, right? We're also, we're only saving the tasks which are included down there. Data tables, information requests, um, um, document requests, but we're not saving, again, any customer data within that project. So I think this will save you guys a lot of time. This will uh, help you to standardize your process, your process when you are interacting with customers and requesting information, but also when you are um, following or managing your own tasks internally. And this will allow you to serve better your clients and free some time for you to do some B-level things. Back to you, Stacy. Thanks, Juan. Thanks for that recap. Um, so moving and shifting to a little bit out of projects now, um, so this next feature, we've made a lot of strides with improving your document workflows by fully pulling in our e-signature workflows from right signature into a truly native experience inside of ShareFile now. Um, so if you're an e-signature user, um, something that you've noticed probably recently is that new native experience of that e-signature workflow that's completely integrated into the way you're doing your work with files inside of ShareFile. So along with that, uh, we've made some updates on document templates that really include some of our first document automation capabilities with that as well. So with this new feature, you're able to reduce the time you're spending on creating repeatable documents and eliminate any data error that might happen with manually creating documents every time that you need to send something for signature that require the same document and require a lot of client information or maybe something that you're working with a service require invoicing information that can be auto filled now with a document template. So what that looks like um, inside of ShareFile is we realize that many organizations have repeatable forms and agreements that get used over and over again. So whether that be onboarding new clients or bringing on a new vendor, so you need to get these completed, um, but it can usually be very manual if you're not really using a tool right now for document creation and automation. Um, and some of those admin processes with just managing getting those documents signed and completed can take you up to 10 to 30 minutes 
per document to send those for signature, uh, which obviously sounds not that much, but when you start to think about how often you're sending those documents, it can be really costly to your productivity and your business as well. And it's spent on, that time spent on low value work. Um, so that admin time could be maximized somewhere else where they're pulling in new business or using their skill set for more high value work as well. Um, so with our new document auto automation with autofill fields, you can set up your repeatable document once and then reuse it again and again. And then you can eliminate that time you or your staff was spending on document creation and use automation to pull in that data that you normally pull in for those forms into those agreements automatically. To visualize um, this a bit and how this sort of looks like inside of Sharefile, um, you'll see that setting up a document template inside of Sharefile is easier than ever. Um, and you'll have the ability to set it up and share it with your staff as well to increase your standardization and uh, process within your organization. Um, another thing is with autofill fields, you can set a connection to pull in specific data into your template. So every time that you send it to a recipient, that template, it will pull the recorded information based off of what rules you set with that field um, to improve your form accuracy and completeness. So you don't have to go in, enter that information, or the client would have to go enter that information since you already have that information. Um, so right now we have connections with obviously Sharefile user and client user data. So any user data that you have um, inside of Sharefile, you could get pulled in. Um, so if you're going to be sending it to a client, um, maybe you need to fill out their address. You could autofill that information and you wouldn't have to manually or the client wouldn't have to manually enter that information in. And then we also have a connection right now with Salesforce. Um, where you could pull in information that lives in your CRM into those document templates. We are expanding uh, to more third-party applications in the near future, so keep your eye out for that. But this is something that's very exciting um, and our first step to document automation and improving your workflows with those repeatable documents. Um, moving on to another feature that will help you with efficiency, speed, and security, really is our file export integrations. Um, so we've been working really hard on improving how you're working with your files inside of Sharefile. And we realize that you're not always working solely in Sharefile. You have other applications that you're jumping back and forth in that requires to pull those files in. So maybe you have these files inside of Sharefile where you've requested documentation from. Um, you also need to upload it into another application that you use um, for service or with another vendor as well. Um, so we've added some integration points to help solve a lot of this context jumping and increase efficiency with um, some file export integrations here. So with this, um, we have added a few new, actually numerous, I think it's about four or five, um, new applications where we're integrating into common um, business apps, whether that's CRM, or maybe an accounting specific integration where you can find all of our integrations inside of our catalog. Um, if you have never visited the catalog, it's sort of new. Um, if you log into Sharefile, it's gonna be on your top toolbar on the right. Um, in there, you'll find our solutions, which we'll talk about more about later, integrations and templates. And what Juan was talking about earlier, you can also see what kind of templates live inside of our catalog. But here you'll find the file export integrations that we have currently available. Um, so right now we have integrations with Pipedrive, Salesforce, Xero, FreshBooks, and QuickBooks. Um, so a lot of the value here is exchanging data between those applications and Sharefile can be super convoluted, especially if you're downloading hundreds of documents. So we've tried to increase the efficiency of that. So with a couple of clicks, you'll be able to transfer whatever documents and where they live inside of Sharefile into those business applications of where you want that data to live. Um, so you're eliminating a lot of manual entry and then increasing your efficiency as well. And another thing that I don't think everyone really necessarily thinks about with um, transferring files is that data security also plays into um, this role too. So if you're downloading a bunch of sensitive documents on your local computer, 
that could be a risky behavior and could be a potential threat in the future as well. Um, so it's something that you always want to be very conscious about is when you're moving those files around how you're moving them. Um, so this integration point can help you increase that um, data security posture with moving those sensitive files from business application to business application. Um, so what this really looks like is if you're inside of ShareFile, you can access these export integrations and export capabilities from your folder files, from your project files, and your solution files. Um, so wherever those files may live, you can export with these integrations um, and quickly transfer those files, whether that be the entire list or just a couple of files into those applications with three clicks instead of you know, manually downloading, zipping up files, moving them over and over. Um, and I mentioned this earlier with the catalog. This is where you can see what kind of integration points we have today. This you will see continue to grow month over month on who we're trying to integrate the, your business applications with, with ShareFile. Um, so I mentioned before Salesforce, QuickBooks, FreshBooks, Xero, and Pipedrive are available today. Um, so the next one is really exciting, and I think something that you're all hearing about right now is um, AI. So this is our first use case inside of ShareFile with leveraging AI capabilities um, to improve the way you're working and then also improving your security as well. Um, so with AI Secure Share Recommender, this is something that sort of works in the background um, that's really super helpful to consider if you haven't already discovered it already. Um, that really enhances and guides you to secure behavior um, that you necessarily don't want to think about all the time. I know I'm guilty of sometimes not realizing what I'm sharing and not selecting the most secure um, option there is. So requiring people to log in or setting a passcode. Um, so this solution um, and new feature inside of ShareFile is going to help you start to do that. Um, so what it does is when you're sharing a single file with someone, it could be an employee, a client, or just sending a link, an email um, of a single file to someone, it will read that file and check it for any PII data. Um, and it does that in a very secure way, the way it's reading the data as well. And it will recommend the most optimal share setting to make sure you're practicing secure, um, secure file sharing with that set document. Um, it will just recommend based off of what you're trying to do. So if you're already selecting a very secure method of sharing that file, it won't recommend or scan anything. Um, it's only going to do this when you're sending with a, a less secure uh, method, and that's usually you know, an anonymous link, or if you're sending an email and then anyone can open it without any kind of sign-in or a passcode, it will prompt this recommendation as well. Um, this is super helpful with setting and securing and making sure your staff is setting secure settings when sharing um, files. And then also helps you comply with a lot of your compliance standards as well, making sure that you're doing your due diligence there with sharing um, client data or internal data. And then automatically setting those appropriate share settings can really help you save time and reduce human error and improve your efficiency as well. I know that usually we all have very secure solutions um, to work with, but it's always a second thought when you're working really fast. Um, so this will be something that can be easily applied uh, without even trying to send something um, without even knowing that it's not secure. Um, a note here is that when you do have this um, secure share recommendation come up, you have the option to apply the recommendation or just ignore it. So it's not going to change your workflow for you. So it's not going to disrupt the way you're working. Um, but if you do decide to set that recommendation, it's just one click and it changes it for you, which is really nice. Um, I will note that ShareFile does not use the file content um, and any PII that's detected to train any AI technologies. Um, so rest assured that we're not using any kind of data against you guys. Um, this is a very secure way in using AI. Um, there are abilities to switch it off if you want to opt out of some of our AI capabilities that you can do through admin settings. Um, but this is something that 
we've seen our users already truly leveraging to secure their links and their files, whether that be through those emails or their share links. Um, so yeah, so you can do this through share links and then you can also do this through email as well. And we are gonna be expanding to multiple files soon. So right now, when you share a single file, it will prompt this um, AI share recommendation. Um, but if you're sending multiple, it currently does not have that use case, but it's something that we're exploring into the near future that you'll see soon. Moving on to automated threat remediation with Juan. Thank you, Stacy. And I, you just said exploring, and, and I saw a few questions on the chat, at, which, by the way, they keep coming, and that's great. We really love the the interaction uh, about BDR. Um, so we, we're not discussing BDR specifically today, um, but there are a lot of improvements coming for BDR plans as well. So stay tuned because good things are coming your way pretty soon. Um, we we've been discussing about several ways we where we can help you um, be more efficient, be more productive. Um, on, 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 on how we call it, like, try to provide just what you need. But we believe in Sharefile that also we need to do that on, on a secure and compliant way, right? So when we think about one of your main issues or, or problems or challenges, let's put it any, any word that you like, it's how you will protect um, your customer information. I mean, your own company information as well, but uh, how you can keep your data including your data and your customer data secure. And one of the things we, we've been working on hard lately, it's to do that on a way that you can do that um, without actually being um, uh, involved on doing that, right? By proactive action. So automated threat remediation and what Stacy has just described uh, are tools or features that can actually expand your security posture with actions that are automated and can help you detect and react to potential threats. So let's take a look a little bit more in detail in the next slide about what automation threat remediation is. Um, when a security threat is identified on your account, Sharefile will proactively execute an automated action to mitigate that risk. One of the actions that we currently can do is create a password reset, right? So when um, we detect some threat to your account, we will, um, uh, reset or demand a password reset for the user which account was involved on that security threat. So that user will be unable to log in until he resets that password. Um, what are the benefits of these type of actions, right? So we believe that actually we will be able to provide um, more tools for you and your customers to interact in a platform that is secure. Right, and actually, you will be able to do that without being constantly monitoring for dashboards. And we will provide those tools in the hands of everyone, not just admins, right? Which we know we've been pretty um, 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 solid on on that front in the past, but also to add more security tools also in the hands of the users, right? I mean, by users here, I mean employees, so they know exactly what is going on, and they can have the tools in their hands to actually react quickly. Uh, to a security threat. So, and one thing that is also important, we believe that this is so important to our core, again, build secure and compliant, that we are making this tool available for everyone on advanced premium and BDR plans. So what you're seeing right now is actually um, how an admin can see what is going on around the client activity and security alerts, right? I mean, again, we believe this is so relevant that we want to provide um, a way for admins to stay on top of everything that is going on. And when they're not on top, Sharefile is going to be taking care of that. So on the next slide, you'll see what is the type of, um, um, ad, uh, what is the type of notification that uh, the account admin gets when a potential threat um, was detected and what was the action that was taken, right? In this case, what we're going to be um, doing is um, following, monitoring a few scenarios right now, this tool, it's able to monitor what we call impossible travel, impossible travel scenarios, which means that a user um, is active or downloading documents from seven or eight countries at the same time or uh, on a very short span of time, or actually a client is logging in from seven or eight countries in five minutes, right? Which is impossible. That's why we call it impossible travel scenario. So when we detect those, um, we're, um, uh, what we detect actually that is a threat, 
uh, based on how we describe that scenario, we will demand a password reset. And this is what the admin is getting on their account. So the admin, without doing any, any action, it's been notified that a threat was detected and a remediated action was taken by Sherefal. And that user is unable right now to log in without resetting the password. And on the next slide, you will see what the actual user is receiving, right? I mean, again, we are trying to make security available for everyone in Sherefal. We believe that you need to work in a tool that gives you the ability to be secure and also compliant. So does the user in this case, that uh, which account is being involved on this um, thread that we detected will receive a notification and will be invited to reset the password. And the password reset process is super simple. We're not even showing this here. They need to click on reset your password. You will be redirected to um, your login uh, a screen and they will need to create a new password and then log in as uh, nothing happens before. One thing that is important, and Stacy mentioned for AI Secure Share Recommender, um, if for any case um, um, you you want to um, uh, take a look at how this is impacting and you want to try and, and, and perhaps um, uh, try only in a few accounts, you can actually select if you want to opt out or not uh, from this feature, right? So we want to give you all the flexibility um, uh, for you to the to, to actually be able to be cognizant about how you wanna secure your platform. This is a, a tool that's going to be available. It's actually active by default, but if you believe that you wanna be monitoring and you don't wanna use our automated threat remediation actions, you can disable. So this is, uh, again, we're putting all the tools in your fingertips for you to make the call of how Sherefile can help you to uh, be um, um, a better platform to feed your needs. Going back to you, Stacy. Thanks, Juan. And that's sort of round up a lot of our security enhancements. Um, this will be the last feature before we move in some um, more Q&A, of course. Um, but this is something extremely new to ShareFile in the past month or so. Um, and it's something we call solutions. Um, so solutions are end-to-end -end workflow processes that are tailor-made to specific industry workflows. Um, so this is something you'll see more and more about as we expand to a number of different use cases for solution and industries that we have in ShareFile. But that's something that you'll find inside of the catalog again, where we will host and put all of our available solutions inside of that catalog. Um, but we just released our very first solution in a beta release for the accounting industry specifically. So this solution will manage the end-to-end -end client interaction and document management process during a tax preparation service. So more about what this specific, specific solution will do. Um, so it really helps streamline that document management portion of it um, from the client point of view. So when you're communicating and you're onboarding and you're collecting documents, um, and you're requiring questions, people are going back and forth, whether that be staff working collaboratively on a, a client or a client asking you questions too. It's in one place handled inside of that solution. Um, and we know managing client interactions in those document processes that come along with that can be extremely disjointed and really hard to collaborate, especially if multiple staff or touching one client. Um, you don't really know when a client has moved out of a certain process in your steps as they go through that service journey um, or whether you're managing that client process and document work workflows that can be extremely manual. So maybe you're not having tools that you're handling with it today um, and it's done through just email and mail or you're jumping back and forth between four to 10 tools. Um, so this is why we sort of built the way that we built solutions and where you'll see not just this solution, but the rest of the solutions that will simplify that entire process and that client journey, um, very customized to that specific use case. Um, so with that, um, this specific solution, um, really has everything that you need to handle the client interaction and the document heavy processes of an individual tax return process um, inside of ShareFile. Um, so the way that this solution is created, um, and I encourage you if you do have premium to go ahead and look at it, try it out. Um, it is still in beta, but 
it's something that we're moving towards to where we're trying to customize exactly to the process that you're going through and simplifying the collaboration that goes along with it and keeping that client in one place and handling all of that client interaction and engagement in a singular uh, place with staff and clients. Um, so you don't need separate document request list tools or a digital form builder or any e-signature tools. It really does help you reduce the amount of tools and touch points you're using with staff and clients to get this service done. And it helps you simplify your tech stack as well. Um, so through that journey, you'll see that a lot of the things that you need to get from clients, whether that be documents or getting things signed, like an engagement letter and onboarding that client, can be done through the solution now. Um, so a lot of automations are also built into this. And I think that's really the magic of a solution where you'll see where after this client signs, it'll kick off another process automatically, not requiring you to go in the next day and check to see if that client signed the document or uploaded those documents. It's already doing that for you and kicking it off to the next stage where it's really speeding up that service um, and improving the way your client is being interacted with as well. Um, so with this, um, we do have a very separate demo um, that we'll share out too to see the full flow, but I wanted to touch on a, a key a few features that live inside of this solution. Um, so after you've installed that from your catalog, um, you have the option to create an engagement and that will kick off and always start with the client. Um, so you'll see here that I have a couple of client engagements already created. This is where you'll manage all those engagements. So let's say you have 50 um, client current engagements that are still open that are being worked on. You'll see all of those there. And depending on who you share it with, um, so maybe you have an admin staff that you work with on client services, you can also share that with them too so they have visibility on the client. Um, and the same with projects like you saw before, you have that custom custom permission ability too. So maybe you don't want the admin staff to have visibility or capability to delete or view certain things. You have that granularity inside of the solution as well. Um, there's also that built-in client onboarding flow um, that really auto-generates everything that you'll need for that client interaction. And it always starts with the client there. So after you enter your client name, um, you'll hit click agreement and it'll kick off that onboarding process with that client. Um, and it usually starts out obviously with an engagement letter or sending a templated form to get information to inform that service. Um, all of these are already templated, ready to go, um, built off of all the automations after you click create engagement for that client. Um, so everything's already templated. Um, into that process, since we know this is something that's a big pain point, is redoing the service again and again and reusing your templates for that reason. Um, so after all this is said and done, it will automate um, and send the engagement letter or fill out the templated information request to the client. Um, after that, the client uh, will upload all of their documentations inside of those templated um, document request lists and you're able to see exactly, okay, after the client signs, all of these are auto assigned to that client. So you don't have to go back in and manually assign these to the client and they're already getting the document collection list from you automatically. Um, and you'll see what that looks like in that little box with the client portal view of the items that you have requested from them. Um, that includes the item that you requested and the description. And then if you click on the, one of those little tabs, you'll also have the ability to comment on it contextually. Um, so if maybe they're confused on what they're being asked for, they can ask a question there and you'll be notified based off that comment of what exactly they're confused about, which is super helpful because it keeps it in one little container space. Um, I do encourage you to um, go ahead and check out the rest of solutions, but it is in beta. Um, there's a lot of new things that are coming inside of that solution very soon um, and very excited to expand into other industries and use cases in the very near future as well. But wanted to give you a, a small introduction into what solutions was. And Stacy, we have a couple questions if you would like to have, answer a couple of those live. Um, just a few basic ones we have going. So, so we had a question about 
the solutions app. Is there a communication tab that's going to be in there that we can interact directly with our client? Inside of a solution, is that what you're saying? Inside of the solution, yes, correct. Yeah, so right now, the way the solutions are built, they're different for every single use case. So I won't say that necessarily the solution we have now for accounting for the individual tax preparation will look and you know feel the same as the future other solutions that we're building. But right now, the way that communications are built inside of that solution are contextually through comments for document request list items. Um, that's where we see the biggest pain point where people have questions. Sure. Um, I know there's other avenues that we're looking at with a general comment communication chat function inside of that service because I know I know staff like to collaborate that way too to let them know when to move a uh, client to a certain stage in that process. But that's something that I know our PM here that's working on that feature will note down as a positive. Sure. sure. And uh, I have a, it's a two-pronged question here, but it's focused on premium versus non-premium. Are all the features that you showed today for premium? And if not, which of the features can non-premium customers get access to? Yeah, so for that, I think everything was premium except the automated threat remediation. Everything else is housed under premium and automated threat detection and remediation is available in advance and premium, of course, too. Awesome. And then jumping off of that, is it possible for uh, an existing customer or a new customer uh, to have a trial period or demo version to be able to see the benefits of premium? Absolutely. Um, I, we would love to collect your information and we'll reach out to you separately. So if there's anyone else that would also be interested in that, let us know. Sure. Um, we do have a couple more uh, specific questions. Um, one related to the AI Secure Share Recommender. Uh, we saw it in the client version, but does it also work with the Outlook plugin? It currently does not. That is definitely a use case um, the team is exploring right now. That's something that we want to expand into since we know that a lot of you leverage that plugin and the Gmail plugin as well. Um, so not right now, but hopefully very soon. Sure. And I did see a question come in. Uh, if there was a place that they can go to learn about projects, uh, I'll go ahead and drop a link here in the chat here in a moment uh, of one of the webinars we just hosted that was a walkthrough of creating your first project. So really giving you that hands-on approach of, of looking at your first project. Um, yeah. We, oh, yeah, yeah. And that was with you and your team and it was very well received uh, from our customers. So quick question on the document templates piece. We talked a little bit about some integrations, but can you pull any information for document templates from an Excel spreadsheet or does it have to be through a direct integration? It would have to be through an integration point. So <laughs> right now we don't have a way to do that. Um, but I will say that our document template journey has just begun. So there's a lot of exciting use cases coming down the funnel very soon um, where you'll see a lot of um, more flexibility and customizability with the document templates and being able to pull in a lot of data and you know edit it as well. Uh, and as always, we'd love to see you uh, at some future webinars. So thanks team. And please join us for that July 30th session where we will be showing demo versions uh, uh, of the top features that you all voted for today. And we look forward to seeing you there and have a great rest of your Tuesday, everyone. Thanks. Bye.